Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy right here. This is the Herman Knives Micro Sting. That's right, a Herman Knife that's actually micro, that's actually a little guy. Whoa, go figure. Anyways, um, this is a very interesting little knife here, and uh, I'm really glad to uh, get a chance to take a look at it. But first off, before I go any further, I gotta thank Polish Custom Knives for sending this guy along. Polish Custom Knives is Herman's main retailer. I gather they are collaborators in some sense or another, but um, they did send this guy along. I have had a long history of working with Polish Custom Knives, uh, both for Herman and for, you know, with other brands. And, uh, you know, I'm a really big fan of Herman at this point. But as always, they reached out. They said, hey, Nick, you want to check out a micro sting? I said, yes, absolutely. Oh, my God. Because, well, I, I like Herman's stuff at this point. But nonetheless, I told them I'm going to talk about the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly. Might be a gem. It might be junk. Uh, they did still send it along. Nonetheless, we do have to assume this is the very best quality controlled one of these guys ever. And I'm doing my best not to let that affect the nature or the quality of my review. Next thing, let's do some size comparison. This is finally a Herman that is of a size that I like. Let's go on ahead and put it up right here against the Spydeco Delica. And what we're going to see here is this is Delica sized, right? It is right around that sort of vicinity. A little even smaller in the pocket on some dimensions than the Delica. Here it is against the Ontario Rat number two. And what we're going to see here is, yeah, it's in that kind of size class. Here it is against the Spydeco PM2. As always, and we're going to see, yeah, this is a relatively small knife. Now, I'll, I'll throw it up against a couple of other Hermans. Here it is, first off, against the uh, regular Herman knife sting. It's a particularly fancy variant of it, but this is, as you can see, a sting that is just a little bit more micro, right? Same basic idea, same basic approach, although they have made some changes. It's not just scaled down so to speak. Here it is against Herman Knives' previously smaller model. This is the Vespatilio, which uh, we'll, we'll talk about the comparison later on here, but uh, this is a, a smaller knife. It's also a better knife in a number of meaningful ways. Here it is against the Herman Knives uh, Ishtar, and then here it is against the Herman Knives Mantis, which are much closer to Herman's general vicinity of size, right? This is the kind of thing that left to his own devices Herman does, and this is the kind of thing <laughs> that, yeah, this is very, very much micro uh, when viewed by Herman. And then finally, let's go on ahead and compare it to a ruler. And what we're going to see here is this comes in uncontroversially under three inches. No matter how much the cop dislikes you, this is a three inch or less sort of knife. The overall length of it is, well, a little bit over six inches, maybe six and then three quarters, seven inches. Someplace in their vicinity, it is not a particularly big knife. Um, It is on a little bit on the thicker side. So I do want to compare this to the Delica in that sense. And so we'll do here is just look at these two from straight above. We're going to see this is a little bit thicker, right? This is fully contoured and everything like that. And so that means at its thickest point, it is a little thicker than the Delica. And the stock is a little bit thicker as well, although it comes down to a nice thin edge. So there you go. Next thing, who the heck is Herman Knives? Well, Herman Knives is a uh, company. They're based out of Poland. There's the whole Polish custom knives thing. Might have clued you into. But it's Batos Herman. Sorry about mispronouncing your name, my friend. But uh, nonetheless, Herman Knives is a, uh, it's a, uh, a company, uh, and they seem to be doing a fair amount of expanding, which makes sense because they're selling a lot of really nice knives. But they are, uh, Herman is a very, very high end CNC made knife maker that is made with uh, computational numerical control uh, milling and things like that. This is CNC milled out. And so uh, this is, they're really cool. But you pay a price for that. So just telling you this up front, the price of this knife as configured right now is $2,217, which is a lot of money. We will talk about that, rest assured. But there are a bunch of different varieties of different prices. This is more expensive because it's using the Damacor, because it has a Damasteel inlay, backspacer, I'm sorry, a uh, Timascus, that is, inlay, backspacer, and clip, right? Um, This is a very expensive variety of them. The base price, the lowest I was able to see on uh, Polish Custom Knives, is going to be around 900 bucks. Still a good chunk of change, but it is a lot less than that. So anyways, let's go ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this very, very nice little knife. So the good side to start with, this has a very nice box. This is a thing that Herman does for a lot of his higher end pieces. I gather not every Herman knife, like the base models, might not come with a box like this, but this one does, and the box is beautiful, right? The knife can just fit right in there, stay as such. Do you end up using this that often? Well, for me, no, not really. Um, but it, And it also does come with a pouch, just like a more classical pouch. But the, the, the box has both the knife as well as a uh, tool that you can use with it here, the little wrench, effectively, that works for the pivot here. Um, and so, you know, it comes with that. It's a nice little touch. Is it crucial? No. 
But is it nice? Yes, yes, it is. And it definitely makes for a very nice presentation, right? That's a beautiful thing. Next thing, this has very nice ergos. And the, the ergos on this are much nicer than, for instance, the Vespertilio, right? Um, which is a, a prior smaller knife by Herman Witt. Add this really, you know, sharp corner on the end here. This definitely has a little bit of sharpness on the back here, but it's way, way nicer. And it fits really well in the hand. This just cuts very nicely. You hold it well. It controls well in both, you know, saber and hammer grip. It, it's it's a very nice ergonomic little piece here. You're a little bit farther from the blade, but that's the most I can complain about here. It works well, and it fills the hand well because it is contoured all the way across, which is a beautiful thing. Next thing, clip on this guy is nice. It's a nice longer clip, and, you know, for a lot of people, they're like, oh, small knife, why is the clip that long? Well, actually, that's a beautiful thing because it makes it a little bit harder to have it fall out of your pocket, right? Um, the longer clips tend to make for slightly better retention. I don't mind at all having a longer clip on a smaller knife. It's a beautiful beautiful thing. So, and it's just beautifully done too. It's rounded across the top, so it's not at all a uh, problem. It's got beautiful ramp here to get it into your pocket. It sits in a little recess there. The details are there on the clip, and actually that brings me to my next point, which is that the details are there, generally speaking. I'm going to zoom on in here so we can take a, a closer look at what we got going on here. This knife is beautifully detailed in a bunch of different ways. One of the ways is that it has a captive pivot. If we look at the back here, and I'll go ahead and grab a polishing cloth. I just had one. Maybe I should use a polishing cloth, but hey, whatever. Um... Uh, okay, anyways, what we see here is that the back of the pivot here is both uh, nicely polished and uh, it is also uh, not free spinning because it is sunk into the handle and has this little bit of, uh, well, kind of gear-likeness to it. Uh, and so as a result, this does not turn um, when you turn the pivot, which is a beautiful thing. It also is using um, very nice screws, both polished on this end, but also you can see here in the areas where the screws come all the way through they are polished off like so right um such that you know you see the screws there but they are very very nicely done and they end up uh, contributing to the beauty of it rather than well not so i i think that's a nice thing if you're gonna go straight into the titanium on the other side which does have some questions if you over torque this and you strip out some titanium you might have yourself a problem but if you're gonna do it this is a really attractive way to go about doing it um and in some ways i think adds an aesthetic that is above and beyond just a blind hole where it just drills into the other side so anyways there is that the inlay work on this is also very, very nice. This has a very nice Timascus inlay here, and I'll just polish it up here so you can see the full color here. But the not only is the material great, like they have sourced very, very good um, titanium Damascus. And again, if we compare this to the much earlier Vespatilio, the difference here is night and day in materials as well as in retention. Uh, external screw versus that little dude. Yeah, there's a difference there. But anyways, the inlay work is very, very, very nice. Um, it's done well. It fits well. It is pretty much... I mean, you can feel when you move from one to the other, but it's not in any, like, catchy sense. Um, the the uh, overall machining feels like it matches well, going from here to here and across the same patterns. These same... It's just beautiful like that. Um, the uh, lock bar, actually. If we look at the lock bar, what we see here is the inside of the lock bar is not just scalloped out, which makes it a little bit easier to get to and makes it very, very easy to uh, unclose, but it's also textured, right? The inside of this lock bar is beautifully textured in there so that you get a little extra purchase on it, which is a beautiful thing. The whole knife, as I mentioned already, is contoured, right? It is not a flat knife. You see, by the way, this is high polish on the tang of the blade. I just want to highlight what you see in there. The Damacore is high polished on the tang of the blade. That's impressive. The only place it isn't high polished is on the inside of the lock face where that wouldn't make sense. But anyways, it is a contoured knife. The entirety of the knife is beautifully contoured here. That is lovely. Um, it just looks great. Uh, absolutely beautiful. And you can see that there is a little bit of polish on the titanium itself right? Uh, this entire knife feels ridiculously polished in a number of ways, and that's a beautiful thing. Um, it is also internally milled. I'll see if I can show that off here. What we see is if we look inside the handle there, you see that there are holes that have been milled inside here. Um, and those holes have been milled in places where the inlay is not, right? Because the inlay itself, although in this case you're filling titanium with titanium, so there's no real net uh, you know, uh, gain there, but still, there's been a bunch of internal milling along the top here or the backside. 
Hopefully you can see all that. They have done their absolute best to make this a very lightweight knife, which is a beautiful thing. It has polished hardware throughout, which is nice. It has a lovely backspacer here. You can see it is more of the same Damascus here same colors same and then this little sharp kind of edge approach and it's not actually sharp in the sense that you, if you touch it it's not sharp but it is uh it, you know it just adds very nicely to the overall aesthetic of the knife uh there you go you can see that same thing with the clip here the clip sits in a little cutout here you can see that there's a little bit of a drop underneath the texture and so the texture goes away under the clip which is a beautiful thing and there are screws hidden underneath the clip there which is a nice detail here overall and then like even the laser work on it right where you see herman knives if i show that off there even the laser work on this looks good it's very sharp it's very very well done this knife is just beautifully detailed right um if you look at all the details well they make sense they're good they, they serve the overall it's it's just a beautifully done knife um and so that is a, a beautiful thing uh next thing i do have to point out that the pivot here is compatible with t20 torx t20 we'll talk a little bit more about that later on but nonetheless it is a beautiful thing um and so that, that that's a nice detail um and one thing i actually i want to uh, mention real quick is there were a couple of places where i did compare this to the vespatilio and given the vespatilio is many many well many many at this point i want to say it's probably three or four years uh uh, older, maybe maybe a little less than that, but it is a very, very different knife uh, relative to this guy, right? It is very clear that Herman has done a lot of growing, has done a lot of improving, has done a lot of polishing, frankly, of his work in the time since this and this, right? These two feel night and day, both in the strength of the design, um, but also just in the overall finishing and the overall, it is very rare, especially when you see a maker who is doing very good work as Herman was, even during the time of the Vespatilio here, uh, to see this level of improvement, but Herman really has, and so I have to say, I'm very, very impressed. Um, it is a whole different ball game compared to a knife that was not substantially, uh, you know, not that earlier, right? Um, and so that is absolutely a beautiful thing. Um, it's a whole different price bracket, too. I want to be clear about that, right? So we better be improving, but it is nice to see that difference and that distinction as watching this make it grow. So there you go. Next thing, the action on this is excellent. It is a fast, smooth, and reliable flipper here. Absolutely no wrist. You can see here it fires reliably every single time. Has a delightful detent. Feels great in the hand. Opens very nicely. Closes very nicely too. And this is despite having a relatively smaller blade, right? It's a little bit easier when you've got a massive freaking blade hanging out the top here to uh, get a really good feel in action. This one is great despite being smaller. And so that's great. And it's a liner lock that has a very strong detent. It has been dialed in perfectly. The detent is exactly where I would want it to be. So the action is excellent. Next thing, the blade on this guy is also excellent right? It is Damacore, which is a beautiful thing. Um, and we can see here that it is not just Damacore, but it is a polished Damacore. You can see the world reflected in this blade here, right? That is an absolutely wonderful thing. The Damacore here is the uh, mixing of uh, different steels. You have uh, two steels out on the jacketing here that give it this sort of pattern. And then in the middle, you have a nitrogen steel that is very, very good as a steel in and of itself, right? I like Damacore not just because it's pretty, but also because it holds an edge very effectively. It's great, great stuff. But it comes down to a very nice thin edge at the bottom here. Uh, see if I can show that off. Comes down to a nice thin edge, comes down to a nice thin tip. It has been beautifully polished throughout it, right? Um, and it is, uh, at least according to the manufacturer website, I have not tested this myself, but they are aiming for 62 HRC, which is actually higher than the last one I had, which shows that they are giving a damn about every element of it, right? It's very easy to use fancy materials, um, but to do them poorly, and this is not the case. In fact, that brings me to the next point here, which is that this is handling these materials well. It is not uncommon to see high-end knives that just buy some Damacore, that buy some Damascus, and throw them on there without really doing them justice. This does these justice, right? I would point to Herman's work as one of the best users of Damacore out there, or of Damascus, right? This 
this is really, really, really good. Does the polish well? Does the contrast with the unpolished sections, with the etch, very well? Um, does the Timascus with good colors, good inlays, all of those kinds of things? Does the nice polish on the clip here? Making these materials look great. This is an expensive knife with expensive materials, but the materials are handled well enough that you don't feel like you're getting ripped off, right? That's an absolutely beautiful thing. And Herman is a maker who does high-end materials well. There are makers who make incredible knives but struggle to really feel like high-end materials belong. Herman makes them feel like they belong, um, and that's a beautiful thing. He shows mastery of them, and that's great. And all of that brings me to my uh, final point in the good, which is that this knife feels jeweled in a way, and that's kind of a weird thing to say. But every part of this knife is very, very, very finely detailed and very done. This reads as art and jewelry as much as it reads knife. And if I show you again, you can see here that it's not just shadow that you're seeing, but you're seeing actual reflection on the titanium itself of my finger going back there, right? The titanium is subtly polished, right? The blade is non-subtly polished. The Timascus is beautifully done, right? Um, this is a knife that reads as much art as it reads knife. The, the, the clip on it is beautifully polished here. The back of it is polished. This is a knife that is even, even the Timascus on the back here, on the backspace you can see, is polished and reflective. This is a knife that is art, right? I took this out in front of a coworker who is very much not a knife person and who I did not necessarily expect to understand the world of knives. I was just using it to, I think, um, remove the label from a, a battery or something like that. Not, uh, I should be very, very clear. This is a different kind of battery with just a stick-on plastic label that gave me the name for it. Not like, I'm not like cutting the label off Alkaline's dumb idea, don't cut into batteries. Anyways, I digress. But anyways, I I took it out and he looked at it and said, oh my God, that's a beautiful piece. Like, and was super impressed. I don't think I've ever shown him knives before. I don't think I've ever shown him art, uh, knives as art before, but he instantly viewed this as art. Instantly viewed this as just like, wow, that's really cool. And I think that's really good, right? I think this reads as art for most people because it freaking is art, because it is that good. For some, this might feel like a downside, actually, right? They might look at this and go, oh, I don't know, that's not what I'm going to want on the job site. That's it's fine. There were different grinds for different kinds, and there were more, uh, I'm sorry, there were less dressy versions of this, but this this knife feels beautiful, and it is beautiful, and every part of it is done such that it is going to be beautiful too. This is among the prettiest objects I own, and I say that owning a lot of pretty objects, right? That's a uh, that, that, <laughs> subtle flex there, but I just, even as a reviewer, this is one of the nicest things I own. And combine this with the great, which I'm going to talk about in a moment, makes this a very, very easy choice to carry. I have carried this knife in the last few months that I've had it. This review was a long time in coming, because I I wanted to make sure I really liked it this much, given the price, um, but this this has gotten a lot of pocket time, understandably. So to me, that's what's good here, is that it feels jeweled. It feels like it's been done artistically and beautifully. The materials are handled expertly. Uh, it has an excellent blade, excellent action. Herman is continuing to grow as a maker, which is beautiful, because... Yeah, he started off damn good. The details are there. The clip is nice. The ergos are good. And it comes with a very nice little box right here. On the great side to me, and this one's going to be pretty predictable for folks who know the channel, but this is a beautiful size. This is finally a Herman knife that feels carryable, that feels like it fits my life. Now, to be clear, this is subjective, right? This is a review. Of course it's subjective. But for me, the big problem with some of Herman's stuff is like, this is gorgeous, but this doesn't fit for my life. I take this out in the, the lunchroom and it's going to read as a war crime, right? Um, this is not that, right? It's got a great small size. It's got a great profile for carry, right? This fits in the pocket a little bit better than a Spyderco Delica. Holy crap, that is a very nice little size. It is under three inches, which reduces legal complexities for folks in a lot of places here in the States, right? That's a beautiful thing. But this is very, very much, you know, a lot of Herman's work has been fancy, right? You cannot look at this and say this is anything other than a fancy knife, but it hasn't had that feeling of like fancy folder, a gentleman's knife, heck, a gentle anybody's knife, right? This is a, a fancy little knife par excellence. This is just his home. On the job site is the boardroom, although maybe this one feels a little 
bit more more roomy anyways. But this is a Herman that you can legally carry in a bunch of places, and uh, which shows all of that mastery. And ideally with none of the Irma from accounting calling in a SWAT team because you just pulled out a four-inch blade to cut open your hummus, right? That's a different thing. And so I love this size. I deeply, deeply love this size. And Herman is a maker whose work I really appreciate, but I I appreciate it more now that it's done at a size that is reasonable for me. And I really hope that Herman continues to work both on the huge side, right? Both on the Mantis level, both on the Dragonfly, which is even bigger. I hope he keeps doing this. I also hope he keeps doing this because this is going to be more compelling for a number of people and I am one of them. So for me, the very greatest part about this is that this is finally a Herman in a size that I truly love. So uh, that, that to me is what's great here. On the bad side, I am still a little confused, being honest with you, about the words proudly made in Poland being proudly engraved in English. Um, okay, have fun. It's a fine artistic choice. A little bit odd. The pivot here... The pivot is meant to be a T20, but it is not exactly a T20. Uh, right, let me pull out, oh, no, that's T25, where is my T20? So this is a Weeha T20 bit right here, and if I go ahead and I insert this in here, we see that there is actually a fair amount of play in there. It could be that it is a slightly different variety of T20. I want to be very clear, the T20 bit does engage, and it is more than sufficient to get this out of there, but it feels, uh, not like a particularly secure seating for a T20, right? Like, it might be a T22 or something like that, right? It works, it's fine, but it's a little bit strange to call it a T20 and then not have it fit that well. So, you know, again, it's fine. It, and he gives you the tool. So all of this is complete over the top complaining, but also for three grand, I'm sorry, for two grand, I feel like, you know, yeah, uh, you expect perfect fit with T20, right? Little thing, but it's a little odd. Anyways, um, it also has a, a very much a little pocket peck and flip a tab. This is not a big problem. And this is a knife that is small enough that many people could keep it in their key pocket, right? Uh, the third pocket, it and it wouldn't peck on a damn thing, but at the same time, uh, this is definitely going to be there and it's going to be pecking on whatever's in your pocket all day long. Herman is a big fan of that. Maybe someday he will discover thumb studs and or front flippers, but for now, it is another pointy Herman flipper tab. Not the end of the world, but it is a thing. Next thing, the um, back corner here, I mentioned earlier, is a little bit on the pokey side, more specifically because this sits a little bit higher in the pocket, right? This is going to be, this much of this knife is going to be sticking out there. If you are carrying it, for instance, in the, uh, in the key pocket, it there, you're gonna feel it occasionally if you bend over the wrong way. It is, for instance, much better than the Vespatilio, which had this corner, which was uh, downright inhumane in some ways. This is much better, but you definitely do feel that sharp edge a little bit more than, for instance, on this guy, uh, where you don't get that, but this also isn't going in that third pocket, any or fifth pocket. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> anyways, details, details. Next thing, the uh, Damacore here. If we take a look at the blade, what we see here is the Damacore has these two kinds of steels. It's got the jacketing, which are, you know, um, mixed together in the Damascus style, and then you've got the, uh, the, the nitrogen steel. If we look on this side, it looks beautiful, right? But if we flip it over, what we see actually is that there are two places where the jacketing material actually intersects the edge of the blade. What this means is that at this place right here and at this place right here, I actually have a different steel on the edge of the blade here. Now, this is not a big deal. I want to be very clear about that, but at $2,000, everything is a big deal. And what this could mean is uneven wear resistance, right? That part of this knife is going to be a little less wear resistant right here and right here than compared to the nitrogen steel in the middle, right? It's not a big problem, but it is something. And I understand also that Herman is at the mercy of the billet here. If we look at the very top of this knife, you can see that there's kind of a river where that uh, nitrogen steel is in the middle there. This is a problem that is often had with Damacore and that many, many makers have reported, right? And I understand that, you know, you get to this point, you realize, ah, crap, the etch covers that, but it is a little tiny detail. Um, and at this kind of a price point, those are the tiny details that might be considered. It hasn't been a problem, partly because this nitrogen steel is so damn wear resistant, but it is a thing that you should consider, right? Um, and if it were all happening, you know, all over the place, then that might be a little bit more of an issue. Next thing, disassembly on this is still not beautiful. Herman Knives does many, many things well, but disassembly, not great. Um, you know, because he's using loose bearings. And to be clear, uh, th th this is a thing I, I, I didn't end up needing this time around. If you watch my disassembly, you'll see why I complain, but he is using little tiny loose bearings in there. 
Yeah, these are some spare loose bearings included with the knife, which is a great idea. But nonetheless, uh, that is not amazing, right? Those extra loose bearing approach, not great. I'd kind of love to see Mr. Herman move to a different bearing approach at some point. It's a little easier to take apart, right? I am among the more experienced people in terms of taking apart a variety of different knives, right? I think that's uncontroversial. And I got to say, Herman's is still a little touch and go for me, right? I would really rather not take this knife apart right right now. I could do it, but I'd really rather not. Then finally on the bad side, the price on this guy is way up there. 2200 bucks and change. That is a bunch. This is a beautiful piece of functional art. We're going to talk about this later, right? It is my favorite Herman ever by a mile. It's his best done. He is a world-class knife maker. At some level, I feel more okay with it than you might expect. We'll talk about that later, but oh boy, that's a lot of cash right? This is completely out of line for most people in the world. There will be many of you out there who would never contemplate spending that on a pocket knife. Those people have a term, by the way, we call them reasonable humans. Um, but it's a lot of cash. And even the base price, 900 bucks, is still a lot of money. The quality is there, but you can get a knife that is, you know, 95% is good for one third of the base price. And when you get into this range, you're, you're buying art. You have to be clear about that. I think that's okay. I think that's a good thing that we can do to support artists, but it's not buying a pocket knife. It's a different thing. So um, all of that to me is the bad. Is that the price is wild. Disassembly is still a problem. The Damacor does intersect the edge just a little tiny bit. Well, the, 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 the jacketing, that is. The back corner, a little sharp for a watch pocket, but not terrible. There is a little tiny pocket pack and flip a tab here. It is not exactly T20, and it's a little weird to have proudly made in Poland, proudly written in English, but whatever, not a big deal. On the ugly front, the price is very, very close, and I really hope that Herman is able to keep the prices from creeping up higher and higher, because it's on the edge towards ugly here, but given ev how well everything is done here... I, I, I can't say that there's ugly. So let's go into the final conclusion, which is that this is a damn good knife, right? It has a great little box. It's got good argos, a nice clip, great details, great action, an excellent blade, lots of continuing growth from Herman, who is a maker who each time I handle his stuff think, wow, there's not that much place to grow here. But uh, expertly handled materials, a feeling that this thing is a, a, not just a gem, but a jewel, right? Um, th this is a beautifully made object here. And the price, uh, I'm sorry, that's not the good part. <laughs> and the size, th th it is finally carryable in a lot of contexts. This is going to be a Herman that is better for most people uh, than I think a lot of his other stuff, uh, making presumptions about most people's lives. It's still probably made in Poland in English. It's not exactly T20. It's still pocket pecking. Back corner is still a little pokey with a shallower carry. The Damacore billet does have a wandering core. Uh, uh, the disassembly still isn't amazing. The price is wild. It's an amazing knife, but the price is wild. And that I want to talk about for a second. 2200 bucks is a price that is completely out of range for a lot of humans. And it is a massive outlier relative to a lot of the stuff, at least in the knife world, that I look at on this channel here. Right? For a lot of people, that price was a, I am done, we're out of here, sort of situation, right? And this is one of those times where I think it's worth reminding people that this is a great knife, but you can get a lot of functional knife for much, much less. This isn't about what is the best pocket knife I should buy to carry to cut open boxes and envelopes, right? You can pay one third of the price of a base model micro sting and get a knife that is 95% is good, right? Like TRM Neutron or something like that, right? Or a very nice, you know, you can get lots of really great stuff out there, right? This is not the knife that you need to buy if you are just buying a knife to carry, right? I want to be clear, you don't buy this to just buy a good knife. This is art, at the core, Herman has reached the level where his knife making is on par with any CNC knife maker in the world. I, I feel that, right? I don't necessarily know that there is any person that I would say is better than Herman at making knives. There are many people who I would say are just as good, right? But Herman is at the stage where there are it may have peers, but doesn't have superiors at this stage, right? Um, that's a lot for me to say, by the way. But this is an expression of that art, of that mastery, right? And so, this is not so much about a knife at this stage, right? In much like it would be ridiculous to say that you need to buy original oil paintings and marble sculptures because your apartment walls are looking a little bare, it's ridiculous to say you should buy this if you need a knife, 
All right, this is a thing that you buy out of appreciation for the art, for the mastery, which happens to be very, very good at opening boxes and envelopes and blister packs. This is great in the pocket. It is a great knife, but it is art, fundamentally. And so if you're in the comments typing, you know, oh my God, it is ridiculous to pay that much for a pocket knife. Yes, you are right. It is ridiculous in the same sense that it is ridiculous to pay thousands of dollars for a canvas, it's just cloth, covered in pigments, which are in oil, when you could just buy a printed poster. Same damn thing, right? That makes a lot more sense financially, and it gets you a lot of the beauty right there, right? It is ridiculous to shell out big bucks for a rock that got broken into the shape of a dude when you can 3D print something that neat for your table right now from the internet, right? That's uh, Why would you do that, right? If you consider this knife in the same tra uh, tradition of buying original art as a way for folks with some privilege to support artists who are creating something amazing, this knife makes sense, right? This is a beautiful thing. But it doesn't make the same kind of sense that, you know, a Spyderco PM2, which is a great knife without any shadow of a doubt, or a TRM Neutron, which is a great knife, without any shadow of a doubt. It doesn't make the same kind of sense that those knives make. This is different. And if you don't, like, if you go into it making that comparison, then you're going to think I am insane. That makes a lot of sense, actually, given the fact that I'm kind of insane. But at the same time, uh, this makes sense as art, and it also happens to be a good knife. And by that measure, and frankly, just in terms of the knife making itself, in terms of the mastery, this is my favorite Herman knife ever, and it's by a substantial distance. This is largely because of the size. I freely admit this personal bias, right? Size is important to me, and I want something a little bit smaller for my daily carry, right? Um, this is the first Herman that really fits my carry preference as well. The Vespertilio was almost there, but it was still a little bit weirdly big, and the Sting, again... This thing is not that much bigger, but it's bigger enough that it makes a difference, right? These two things are meaningfully different in the pocket, right? But this, so the size is a very, very big part of it, but it's not the whole thing. It's partly because Herman keeps pushing his own boundaries, right? Keeps improving his treatment of the materials, right? Every time I'm handling a Herman lately, I'm being impressed. And that's not something I'm expecting because... Every time I'm handling one, I'm being impressed. It's hard to keep that going, right? Much in the same way that your company cannot continue to grow every quarter without doing something weird, right? This cannot continue to get better, but Herman seems to be doing it, right? And that's actually really impressive. And he has also taken every step here to, to hit the details, to make this feel like a piece of jewelry, to make this one of the most beautiful objects I own right? It cuts really well. It is a good knife, but it is also beautiful, beautiful jewelry. It's great in the pocket. It's great for carrying. It's great for cutting, but it's also great to look at. It's a lovely object. But all of those things together add up to mean that even though I have absolutely loved lots of my pieces from Herman, right? I have had a bunch of pieces that I really, really, really like. This wins, um, and by a not insubstantial margin right? This is a gem, if any knife is. And it is a reminder that Herman is one of the best CNC knife makers working today, right? The fact that he's able to improve on some of the best knives that I've ever owned on a regular basis is really, really impressive, right? You can point to many peers, but there is nobody who is plainly better. There are some handmade single author folks out there, the Stan Wilsons, the Ron Bests, or the, the Sobbies of the world. They can improve on this, but that's because it's a different art entirely. It's a different thing. This is an absolutely amazing knife, and to the extent that any knife is ever worth two grand, I can kind of see it here. This is really well done. It is great. It is an amazing knife. It's good art. And it's showing that Herman is still learning and still pushing and still improving, which is good because Herman could have been lazy, right? He could have sat back, rested on the laurels and just made something as good as the last one, but a little bit, you know, smaller, right? And that would have been enough, but no, it went a little extra one. And so that's a beautiful thing. So this is great. Um, this is a knife I love. This is a knife I've been carrying a lot and I will continue to carry a lot. And uh, it is evidence that although uh, <laughs> bigger isn't better, 
better in terms of price tag. Uh, bigger isn't better in terms of knife making either. This is beautiful at a beautiful size too. So anyways, uh, Herman, keep up the good work. Uh, maybe release something crappy so I don't feel like a simp. Uh, that would be great. But otherwise, um, I uh, hope this has been interesting to you, that this uh, ha hasn't stung your wallet too badly, and that you, uh, or at least if it did, it was a micro sting, and that you have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful uh, rest of your day. Bye now.